Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be looking at the creative tools here in Luminar Neo and specifically at my favorite dramatic tool. So once again, we are here in Luminar Neo, we are in the edit module and here on the side on the toolbar, we are in our creative tools and we are looking at the dramatic tool right here. The dramatic tool allows you for extra creativity. It lowers the saturation and increase the contrast. And by doing that, it helps you to achieve the greatest cinematic look in your photos. Now, if you done some uh, dark room uh, editing in the past, it's a little bit similar to the dark bleach bypass look. Now, the dramatic tool is often used in uh, really kind of stylized uh, photography. It's very good for fashion shots, landscape, uh, urban images, and it's also very uh, good for the kind of new techniques of editing, which are very popular amongst the social media and so on. So I'm going to show you multiple ways of using this tool. However, as always, we're going to start by looking at all the different sliders and seeing what each one of them do and does. So we are here again looking at four different sliders. We have the two main sliders called amount and local contrast. And then we have the brightness and saturation adjustments right below. As always, sometimes some of these sliders are hidden. So you just need to click on this little arrow right here to open them and close them. And uh, let's start by looking at the amount. So the amount slider controls the overall intensity of the adjustment. So basically that's the amount of the effect applied to your image. And very simply, let's just uh, push the slider. And once again, as always, we really want to push the slider as far as we can to really see the effect. It's no point pushing the sliders to four or five and then not really realizing and noticing the effect. When you're testing them, make sure you push them all the way and let's see what it does. So once again, as we mentioned earlier, the dramatic tool um, and by pushing the slider, we lowering the saturation and we increasing the contrast. Then it also works with the fine details of the image and the saturation. However, we talk about that in a moment. So this is what it does. You can see the look is quite nice. It works with certain type of photography and it certainly work with this image right here. By pushing the slider, our three other sliders become available because when I brought it down, uh, as you can see, you can actually use them. Once again, like in many other tools in Luminar Neo, these sliders are connected to the main slider, the amount. And if the amount is on zero, you can actually adjust them. So we will push the slider all the way. So that way we can see what we are doing. And we will move to local contrast slider. So the local contrast slider adds a targeted contrast to the finer details of an image. So for that, let's zoom in at least to 100%. So somewhere right here, because there is a lot of fine details, lots of texture here, and uh, we're gonna really push the local contrast here. Let's do that. And you can really see how everything becomes so much more contrasty. Now, in this case, we're talking more about the contrast of a darker and brighter areas. However, you can clearly see um, before and after. As always here in Luminar Neo, when you wanna reset your slider, you can just double click on the name of the slider, and that will reset it to the original value or to zero. In our case, the original value is 60. When we bring it all the way down, it actually becomes very non-contrasty. However, I think with the 60, it's already quite nice. And then when you push the slider up, really the contrast become uh, so much more apparent. So we zoom out now and we move to the other sliders, brightness and saturation. So 
two options here. First, the brightness with the default value of 30. And this slider darkens or lightens the details in an image. And it's really useful for bringing out some of the details. So let's have a look at it. Let's just bring the brightness all the way up. And as you can see, it kind of brightens everything, not just the details, really the brighter areas and push it and make it the kind of minimal white look. The next thing we can do is to bring it all the way down and really darken the image to make it really moody and gloomy. So that's what our brightness slider does. So we can just double click on it and reset it. And finally, the saturation slider here, this slider controls whether the colors become washed out or are more saturated. Uh, so by pushing the slider all the way down, it actually doesn't remove completely the colors. You can still see some shades, but it does pretty good job on making it almost your black and white uh, type of photo. When we push it the other way around, it kind of pushes the colors a little bit further. However, it doesn't work as your typical saturation slider pushing all the colors. It just makes it a little bit more saturated and vibrant. Well, those are our sliders. Uh, we're going to reset all of them. And we're going to look at some other projects and some other images to see how you can use this tool on some other photos. So in order to work on some other photos, we need to move back into our catalog module. And here in the catalog, we have three additional images. Now, quick reminder, if you want to follow along, all you need to do is to jump into the description and follow the link there so you can edit alongside me. Now, the images are free for you to use. You can just follow the link, jump into our Dropbox account and download them from there. So first image we're going to be working on is this one right here, this abandoned room. So let's go to the edit module. And once again, we're looking at the dramatic tool. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to push the slider to see what effect we're going to get. So let's push it quite a lot to somewhere around 80. And the first thing I see, I think it's a little bit too bright. Well, by knowing that, we know that we can move to our brightness slider and really bring the brightness down until we get something we like. So I think something like this. So that way we get a lots of dark areas here and just the glow coming from the windows. That looks really cool. The next thing I would be looking at is the saturation. What do we like? Do we want to make it really almost black and white or do we want to push the saturation up? I think I don't want to push the saturation up because that kind of counter uh, work whatever we done earlier. But I think just somewhere around here. I don't want to make it black and white neither. So this value works quite nicely. And the final slider to work with is the local contrast. And really, we have a two options. We can make it less contrasty and uh, just really let the light and the dark areas to work together. Or we can really push the contrast and make it look almost like an HDR photo. It really is an artistic decision and it's completely up to you, depending what you like and what you want the final result to look like. I think this is great. Um, I am a big fan of HDR photography specifically for this style of photography. However, once again, it's up to you. So this is how you can use it for interior design. And now let's try to see how we can use this slider for portrait photography. So we are back in our catalog and this time we're going to use this image right here. You can hit E on your keyboard to move into the edit module and then you can move into our dramatic slider. So as you can see, it's a lady dressed a little bit like a witch and it could be your Halloween photo or whatever you think it could be used for. So as always, we're going to start by pushing the amount slider and see what it does to our image. And I'm quite happy somewhere here. Now, I don't like uh, the kind of warm tones. I think it kind of counter work the overall feel of the image. So let's jump into the saturation and bring the saturation down to get something like this. Now, after that, again, we're going to look at the brightness and see what works the best for us. I think maybe somewhere around here. And by doing that, we kind of bring in some of the warm tones back so we can again move into our saturation and bring it down a little. So this looks quite cool. Let's just check the local contrast and see what we prefer. Less contrasty or more contrasty? I think less. I think this time we're going to use less contrast because the result looks really cool. And to finish it off, we're going to use a tool we already described in one of our previous tutorials. We're going to use the Atmosphere AI. Now, for this, let's use the mode called Mist. 
and we're gonna push the amount slider to get some of the mist behind the lady then we can work with the depth to just fill in a little bit more of the image and we don't want the uh, mist to be completely bright like this so then we can just jump into the lightness and bring down the lightness to really match it with the rest of the photo. Now, if you haven't seen the tutorial for the Atmosphere AI, the good thing with it is that it actually has the subject um, aware tool built in. So that way it applies the mist to the image. However, it keeps the actual subject alone. It doesn't apply the effect to the subject. So that way you can get a result like this. And let me show you before and after and I think the effect is really really cool obviously it's a different image however if you're going for something a little bit more moody for your Halloween I really like the result right here and to finish today's tutorial I want to also show you how the dramatic tool can be used on black and white photography so for this we're gonna jump into the catalog and use the fourth and final image once again E on your keyboard to move into the edit module and first of all we want to turn this to black and white so for that we can focus on our essential tools and black and white tool right here all we need to do is to click on convert to black and white and if you haven't used this tool before we have a tutorial already on our channel and you should see the link to it in a corner of your screen now we can leave this alone we can just close it and move again to our dramatic tool right here so let's push the slider and let's see what it's gonna do. We don't wanna overdo it, but maybe somewhere around here. Definitely bring the brightness down. So to something like this. Saturation we don't have to worry about because uh, it's black and white. However, the local contrast, let's see what we're looking for. Maybe something like this. Let's bring the brightness even lower. And now what we could do, we could jump into the develop module, which once again, we have a video you can watch later on how to use it. And we can push the exposure and we are just gonna use it with the mask tool. So we click on add mask and we are gonna click on these three little dots and we click on invert. So we basically wanna remove the brightness effect and now we just wanna add it wherever we're gonna paint with our brush. So we adjust the size of the brush, we bring the strength down to 50 and now wherever we're gonna paint, that's where the brightness is gonna be added. So basically we're doing local adjustment or a little bit of dodge and burn here. So let's just paint over these little rocks here and mountains and here as well. And then we can also paint here and maybe we can add a little bit of this effect. Let's just bring the strength down. We can add a little bit of this effect to this area of the forest. So this way we're making a little bit of local adjustments and ultimately we're creating uh, something what could be almost your Ansel Adam effect. Let me show you before and after. Before it's a little bit boring flat image. After you get quite powerful black and white image right here. And I love the result. Now let's close all of this and let's go back to our dramatic tool and once again recap on what we learned today. So we have our amount slider that help us to add the dramatic effect to our image. Then we have a local contrast slider which can be used to add an extra amount of contrast to your details. Then we have the option to add or remove brightness and again add or remove the saturation. Altogether, the dramatic tools work based on lowering the saturation and increasing the contrast in your image to help you to achieve the gritty, dramatic, cinematic look. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.